Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a list of some underhyped fantasy books, specifically some releases from this year that I feel aren't really getting the attention they deserve. Some of these are books that I absolutely loved, and so I'm a little partial. I wish that they were getting more attention. And then some of these, maybe they're not new favorites, maybe they're not ones that I absolutely cannot wait for sequels for, but I still think that a lot of you will really enjoy them, and maybe you just haven't really heard enough about them or haven't seen enough buzz. But at the very least, I think they're worth checking out. And the thing that sort of sparked this video is that in a recent new releases wrap up that I was doing, I talked about the book Monsters We Defy and how I really enjoyed it. I described it as a cozy heist. And I was saying I could see a lot of people really liking this one, especially for the fall. However, I thought it was a negative that it came out around the same time as Babel by R.F. Kuang, because that is the book that has had everybody's attention recently. Obviously, coming up here in November, The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson's coming out, so that's gonna take over a lot of people's interest. But I wanted to highlight specifically some books that have been talked about here and there, but likely aren't on people's radars at the same level as those other ones. The first one I'm gonna start with, not only in my opinion is under hype, but it's super underrated. And so it kind of bums me out a little bit because at this point, I think if somebody were to check it out, they might go to Goodreads and see the average rating is 3.54, which is really low and think, oh, that must not be very good and then not give it a try. And the book would be In a Garden Burning Gold. So this was not an all time new favorite, but I personally think it maybe just hasn't found its audience or maybe it just needs its second book because it is the first in a duology and there's a lot of complexities to the world and to the character relationships. So the setting is really interesting because it's kind of a Greek fantasy story. And by that, I don't mean Greek gods because we've gotten that a lot. I mean, this genuinely feels like it takes place in Greece. It's almost like historical fiction Greece, but with magic. And the idea is that there's this family that has maintained power of this very unstable country for a long time using their magic. The brother is somebody who is involved in the politics and then the sister's magic it involves people marrying her to try to gain favor for wherever they're from. However, it's kind of a death sentence for those people to marry her, but it's also an honor. It's like she's revered to some degree. And people are starting to question if it's really worth it because things are not filled with blessings whenever they do marry her and things are starting to fall apart. The thing that I think is a negative about this book for a lot of people is that with the brother's perspective and all the politics, it's a little hard to keep up. There are so many things going on. And I know for me, the emotional connections to the book definitely came through the sister, Rhea. That is where I found my focus was, but their perspectives are so different because her perspective is involving more character work. Her perspective is involving character relationship building. And so I found what was happening with her really interesting. And usually I really like politics, but even for me, I was like, I don't exactly know what's going on with Lexos. That's just the downside is that these two perspectives almost seem like they would appeal to a different kind of reader. So you're gonna maybe be frustrated with one perspective and you're not gonna love both. But the ending surprised me. There were some twists and turns I wasn't expecting. And I genuinely found the familial drama to be really interesting and sometimes really twisted and kind of dark. Some of the things involving their other siblings and their father, I was like, what? And anyway, I just think that maybe more people need to give this one a try. Try not to let that low average rating affect your decision as to whether you should give it a try. After that is one that I have talked about quite a bit, but I don't think it's getting as many people checking it out as I would have expected. I thought this one was gonna be a home run. I thought a lot of people would be jumping into the book Justice of Kings. I think the fact that there's so much emphasis on justice and morality and should one individual carry as much power as the main character, Sir Conrad von Volt has, so the setup is that this man is judge, jury, executioner, and basically detective as well, all in one. And he is very honorable. However, there's still a lot of questions that arise about one individual being able to do all this and what happens when inevitably, as people tend to do, he is maybe swayed by his emotions or maybe he has had something devastating happen in his life and he's not fit to perform all of those tasks, all of those roles. And you're being told the story through his protege. 
his protege is telling you from present day about her time as his apprentice. And so you get this sense that something has gone wrong at some point. Obviously, you know she's alive, but you don't know, is he alive? You don't know, is the entire country going to fall apart? Is there going to be this reckoning? The thing that I could see being something a lot of people might not love is the fact that this is quite a meandering story. It's not particularly plot driven and it sort of is just this happens, okay, so characters react, now they're going here, and then they react to that, they figure out what they're gonna do, and then they go over here. So it almost reminded me in some ways of First Law. If you like Joe Abercrombie, if you like First Law, I would say try this one. There's not the same level of snark as I would say Joe Abercrombie's books have, but it's still going to deliver with the character work. Again, not exactly the same, just throwing that comparison out there though, because I think that readers of Joe Abercrombie might find that there's a lot they like about this one. I said at the beginning that the thing that sort of sparked this was talking about the book Monsters We Defy. I've talked about this one quite a bit in recent videos. Really quickly to talk about it again, it is a story that I am describing as a cozy heist. You follow a young woman who is living in the Washington DC area, who is using some magical powers that she has to help her solve some something, this mystery that is occurring in the area she lives in. Joining her is a group of other individuals that have their own forms of magic. However, hand in hand with the magic often comes curses. And so you're seeing that all these people have something that makes them a little special and gives them an edge, but then there's something that takes away from it. And the things that take away some of them are genuinely really sad and they really impact the person's life. And you almost get a short story about each character when you're first introduced to them. I really liked it. It made it feel like I was watching a movie. It made it feel like I was watching a heist movie. It was a lot of fun, but then also had a lot of depth, both with the characters as well as the time period it takes place in where you have a lot of our main perspectives are people who not too long ago, their family members were slaves. And so you're looking at how that has impacted their lives now. Anyway, I just thought it was fantastic. It had a lot of depth, but it was also really fun and a fantastic book to read in the fall. After that, a lot of you likely remember one of my favorite books earlier in the year was Engines of Empire. I still really liked that book. I still cannot wait for the sequel. This is a story that I described as Game of Thrones meets Final Fantasy XII. You have this turn of the century feel where there are things like airships, there's this almost combative energy between people that value religion in the old ways, which involved magic, whereas you have people now who are relying on technology. And so you have this clash within society. However, the main perspectives are all members of the Hawksburg Guild, and the most advantageous thing for them is to further the technological advancements in their society. That said, the Hawksburg Guild is also quite close to the people who are ruling, and those individuals have to think about politics, they have to think about the economy, they have to think about pleasing the masses. And so there is a little bit of a balancing act, there is some scheming that transpires in the book. However, it is a wide range of perspectives, you get quite a few people. You have the matriarch of the family, you have her three children, and there's another perspective I can't say too much about, but it definitely adds layers to the family, adds additional drama and an additional bit of tension. It's when it's one of my favorite perspectives as well. It is epic fantasy, so there is a lot to take in. It takes a while for things to get moving, but overall I really liked it. I thought it was super interesting. It is, once again, not the most plot-driven of stories. It is definitely more character-driven, but if you are a character-driven reader and you are a fan of epic fantasy, give this one a try. After that, we have Book of Gothel. This one, I think the downside is that it is presented as a villain origin story for the villain from Rapunzel. And it's adult fantasy, so it. I think for a lot of people, there was the idea it was gonna be a little bit more fairy tale esque And it actually ends up being more historical fiction taking place in medieval times and is sort of about the ways in which restrictions on women and the views of a woman and what her role was in, in society at that time, how that really negatively impacts the main character's life. And it's actually really sad, and it's a story that's kind of slower moving. I've compared it to Keika Yi, to The Bear and the Nightingale, to any of those kinds of stories, Witch's Heart, those that feel more like mythology 
retellings where you're seeing this woman in a certain story, but from a different lens, except for that it's also more historical fiction than fantasy. I really liked it. It is slower going. It is more character focused. There's not the same level of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? It's not an exciting or fun read, but it's somewhat introspective. It's more reflective. It kind of builds empathy as you're reading through, recognizing how difficult this woman's life is. So I really liked it. I also felt like I was learning about that time period. It seemed like the author really put a lot of effort into ensuring this was as accurate to that time period as possible. And then the last one I'll mention for today would be The Final Strife. My friend Jashana loved this one. She adored it. Her, Roger really liked it. Ingrid really liked it. And then Jesse from Bowties and Books, they are doing a strife along. And so they're going through the story because they're also trying to get it a little bit more out there and on people's radars. This is going to sound kind of morbid, but if you like stories that have a class system, if you like that edge in your characters where you know that they're going to try to break things down, but there's also going to be a lot of questions that come up about did they cross a line at this point or how necessary is it for them to do this one act and you know it's going to harm some people but in the long run is it for the best for everyone so maybe it is okay and if you're the kind of person that likes those sorts of stories and you like when those kinds of questions come up then final strife is likely going to be one you really like the way the cast system is broken apart we have three classes the top would be the embers they're the ones that have the ability to use magic they are much further above to the next class below them. Those would be the dusters. This is kind of the poorer classes. They're the ones that sometimes can interact with the embers, but they really are kind of living on the streets or just barely getting by. And then you have the ghostings and the ghostings are incredibly mistreated when they are babies. Their tongues are cut out and their hands are cut off. They have learned to communicate via a form of sign language. And you can tell that there's so much to this world. There's a lot of secrets that you need to uncover. And so for me, the first book, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but there's a lot of things about the reveals in the end of the book, some of the hints along the way that make me very intrigued about the sequel. I also think this is a book that takes a little while to get going. You have very flawed characters who are very impacted by their environment. At times they are subjected to extreme violence, which obviously takes its toll on them. So there's also the fact that at the beginning of the story, you're having to kind of be very patient with the characters. The characters who are a part of the higher classes are often very ignorant, have no idea what's going on with the lower classes, and don't realize how much worse life is for them than it is for their class of people. So there is some patience required with the characters and that acknowledgement that they're going through a lot. But like I said, there are a lot of hints along the way about this greater world and interesting things that are transpiring behind the scenes that make you want to learn more about the world and make you very curious about what's going to come next. Those are some of the new releases that I think definitely are deserving of a little more attention. Let me know what are some new releases that have come out this year that you think are underhyped that you don't see enough people talking about. I would love to check them out. I always love when you all give me recommendations for hidden gems because often your hidden gem recommendations are fantastic. So definitely let me know and that'll also help anybody who comes to this video and sees your recommendations. Maybe they can find stuff there too. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.